Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So on June the 15th, 2025, I gave a presentation called Inconvenient, where I discussed several things that had been suppressed or uh, covered up for political reasons, and I showed this uh, slide that I presented in ICCF 25 at the Takaaki Matsumoto Memorial presentation room where I walked over some of the key highlights of his work and presented some of his materials and uh, this work was uh, published in 1996 and he was using uh, voltages over 40 volts uh, with a range of different electrode types and he used this beautiful technique of having a microscope objective attached to a, a video cassette recorder uh, via a imaging sensor and he was able to record this one millimeter electrode going through a process of electrolysis and after he exceeds this sort of 40 volt limit you start to see these sparks occurring uh, he called them micro sparks and when you look at them freeze frame they're essentially like a mushroom cloud being launched out from the electrode that would be what uh, is apparently going on and so you can see the sparks starting to form here now and if I just zoom on, uh, I've already shown this before, then they become more obvious as the voltage goes up. He turns over the um, light, turns off the light rather, and uh, you see the sparks like such. And there we go. So that's what he did. And this inspired one Nikita Vivok, um, Nikita, and he did a replication yesterday. And this is his work. And he said that... He was inspired to try out the pinched electrode experiments and just see how they, how they would go with his new camera. And he says, the results are super promising right off the bat, at least visually. I think you will appreciate some of the frames I pulled from my 60 frames per second 1920 by 1080 videos. So this is from a 60 frames per second 1920 by 1080 video. He had to digitally zoom due to the camera lens having too wide a field of view. So you can see here that this is digitally zoomed, but the beauty of Matsumoto's technique is he was only looking at sort of this area with his uh, 640 wide sensor or this kind of area. So um, really uh, he was achieving a, a sort of on this basis actual very, very high resolution imagery, um, which was a masterstroke on his part. And of course, um, you know, it's inspirational to Nikita, but I think actually... Um, Nikita or and or others could do something similar and achieve a far far higher quality uh, uh, imagery and we can really understand what Matsumoto was observing if anything and um, understand it in much greater detail so there's a couple of frames here um, that he shared with me uh, this morning uh, and he also shared a video which we'll go through quickly which I've published independently, and it's a slow motion video, which was at 960 frames per second. And uh, it was um, 1136 by 384 on the resolution of that other camera. So we'll just have a look at some of the other slides that are here. Um, so you can see what we must be careful of is what is actually reflection. So in the meniscus here of the electrolyte fluid, uh, you can see a reflection of, or lens to reflection of this, and again here of this. And so that isn't actually a glowing bit of plasma up there. It's actually light that's being lensed from down here. So this is something to be uh, aware of. Again, we've got a lensing artifact here, and again a lensing artifact here uh, with the meniscus. This one possibly off a bubble. In fact, that's a square block, so it looks like an encoding artifact, which you often get on uh, non-uncompressed uh, um, video or low high compression rate video. But anyway, um, we can see here that something has launched out, and it would appear that there is a light here or a ball light here, and uh, potentially one here as well. Again, we must be aware that sometimes a uh, a bubble in the air could be capturing some light coming from the main light source here. So these are some things that 
only when you look in very close are you going to be able to decipher exactly what's going on. But certainly this is looking very encouraging starting off. And then at the higher voltages you can see, just as Matsumoto said, you've got the whole of the electrode starting to produce what he called these micro sparks. Certainly where the pinch effect is occurring on the tip, um, you have this concentration. And this is also what that um, Chinese researcher team showed two weeks after Pons and Fleischmann did their initial announcement and here you know a little bit higher voltage and it's doing something really rather uh, uh, fun to look at again we've got some reflections here this might be a light source outside of the uh, uh, 40 millimeter milliliter I think that is 40 milliliter maybe um, or water so you can get an idea of how big it is I think the counter electrode is over here so I think this is the cathode this is the anode so cathode negative lots of electrons on the surface of what is titanium in this case and uh, uh, because it is the cathode there will be hydrogens uh, being formed and being driven into this so you've got electrons on the surface and hydrogens and so that's where the magic appears to be happening now let's go and have a look at the uh, slow motion video here it is and uh, you can see what happens is there are what look like an explosion but um, these uh, impacts or rather these outflows come out um, sort of perpendicular to the electrode and they travel for a distance and at that point I would argue that they are uh, hydrodynamic in structure um, but what I can see here is something that I recognize as um, looks like AI noise or a lot of noise in this situation here uh, which is unfortunate um, and again it's a reason to try and get really close in with good optics but Nikita has done a fantastic job here with a quick look-see attempt at replication. So let's let's just pause and go back and see a couple of those ejections here. So you just saw that there. Uh, we're going to come back here. So if we look here, just look at this point here. Boom. And there is what looks like to me a toroidal ejection here. And it seems to go in this direction, this direction over here. And then the toroid collapses uh, maybe into a bubble at this point. It looks like it sucks something in there, but there's so much what appears to me from my experience AI noise, which is then being um, aggregated. These bubbles are being aggregated down here, and then they become a normal gas bubble that then rises up. And again, from a similar way, you've got another one. Okay, so ready? One two, three, boom, and it's ejecting out. Now, is this the kind of micro spark? This is why we need to get in closer with higher uh, fidelity, both in terms of short, smaller field of view and no AI and uh, high data rate, low encoding. So ejection here, and it's coming out, it's coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out, and it kind of hits a still coming out here still coming out here still coming out here and it's starting to lose its integrity somewhere over here okay again we've got another one coming out there just then boom and it actually shot through the middle that time look watch boom in one frame it jacked through anyway you can have a look at this uh, i'm going to upload the full version uh, without me talking over it and you can uh, investigate that and I think this is a fantastic job and Nikita thank you very much and it just goes to show that if an experiment is well documented uh, it, it should be very easy for competent people to replicate it and I think this is a very very good start thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video